guys, I'm Addison with KidZone on SeeMyBeach.com. Today I'm going to take you on a really cool adventure. We're at the Carpenter House in Hollywood, Florida. The, the Carpenter House is, a, is the home of an adorable green sea turtle named Captain. And I'm about to take you on a private tour with the director, Dr. Derek Burkholder. Hello, Addison. Hi. How, How are, are you? Good. Great today. Thank you. Good to see you this morning, Addison. Today, we're going to go on a tour of the Carpenter House. I'm going to show you our exhibit hall. We're going to go inside the, the historic home and go see our classroom. And then we're going to go see Captain and do a behind the scenes tour so you can see how we get her food ready and we're actually going to give her her breakfast as well. Are you excited? Yes, I'm very excited. All right, let's go. All right, Addison, so we're gonna start off. This is sort of the entrance into the Carpenter House. We just saw that beautiful mural behind us. And this is our visitor center, our welcome center and our gift shop. So people start there, and then we're gonna go right through this gate. Come on with me. And we're gonna go into the backyard where it all starts. All right, so now we're in the backyard. This was the family's courtyard. And it's a beautiful backyard, and we're actually going to go into their old beach house. So this was the place where they would come off the beach, they'd hang out in there, they've got a nice little fireplace, place to take a shower, and they would hang out there before going back in the house. But this is our education center and our exhibit hall. So we're going to go in there, we're going to learn about some sea turtles, some sharks, coral reefs, and even marine debris. All right, let's go. Come on in. All right, let's go inside. Pretty cool. So this is our exhibit hall. So this, we have a lot of different information about sea turtles, how they nest. We can see a little bit about lionfish. Do you know anything about lionfish? A little. A little bit? Yeah, so lionfish, we have a lot of them out here, unfortunately, now. They're what we call an invasive species. They're not supposed to be here. Um, but unfortunately people let them out of their aquariums and they've done very well here and we have a lot of them out here now but they eat kind of everything and they grow really fast and so we've got some great research going on at Nova Southeastern University to learn about the lionfish and what impacts they're having here in Florida. Uh, we also do a lot of work with corals so you know we have beautiful coral reefs in South Florida um, and with NSU, they're actually growing corals. They take little tiny pieces and they can grow new corals from even a little tiny piece like this. Then they take them back out on the reef and they can make the reef nice and healthy and happy, even in places that maybe were damaged or got sick earlier. So it's a great program where we've got this nursery and are actually growing corals out in the water. Pretty cool, huh? Yes. All right. So, one of the things that we love to talk about here at the Marine Environmental Education Center is things like marine debris. And you know, we had a great beach cleanup a couple, uh, last week. And the reason we want to do that is because these, this trash and these plastics and things, these are going to last for thousands of years, some of them. This little plastic bottle right here will be here for thousands of years if we don't pick it up and take it and, and put it in the, in the garbage where it's supposed to be. Um, so we're very lucky and we get to work with a lot of great people um, and this is Lisa Maselli with Stoked on Salt made us this beautiful sculpture. Everything on here was picked up right there on Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood beaches. All right, this is all trash that was picked up on the beach and she made this beautiful sculpture. We got Captain here, um, we've got little bobbers and trucks and things, all that she's found on the beach there to make this beautiful artwork. All right. So now we're gonna move right on down here. And one of my favorite things is learning about some of these animals here in Florida. So one of the things that we do is we study sharks and sea turtles and other animals. And one of the things we wanna know is where do they go? And so to do that, we can actually follow them with this little guy right here. It's called a satellite tag, okay? So we're gonna actually put this on the fin of a shark. So right there you can see in this picture, but on this big tiger shark here, one of my favorites, it would go right on this fin, and then anytime this antenna comes up out of the water, if that shark comes up to the top of the water, this is gonna ping a satellite and tell us where that shark is anywhere in the world. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. We do the same thing with sea turtles, 
and we catch our sea turtles on the beaches when they're coming up to nest. So we wait till they lay their nest, and then when they're going back to the water, we can um, you know, get next to them. We put a little box around them so we can hold them for just a short period of time, put that tag on and send them on their way, and we can learn where they're going. They might travel from Florida all the way down to Mexico, and then back towards Florida again. So we can see these really cool movements and where they're going as they're living their life after they leave here off the beaches. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right. So as we move over here, um, here we're gonna talk a little bit more about that beach that we have right here behind us at the Carpenter House. And this is one of those really important nesting beaches that we have here in Florida. So we all love sea turtles, right? They're pretty cool animals. Yeah, well, Florida is a, an amazing place because they come here and they lay their eggs. So they, the mom will crawl up on the beach. They're gonna dig a big hole, which is what we see right here. So the mom digs down with her flippers. She uses her rear flippers to dig down like little hands, digs this hole all the way down. Then she's gonna put all of her eggs down in the bottom, all right? Then she'll pile the sand back on there and she'll head back to the water. Those eggs will sit there for a couple of months. And then when they hatch, all those little baby turtles will wiggle and wobble together and the sand will come from above them, go underneath, and it's like a little sand elevator. They're gonna move from all the way down here, all the way up to the surface, and then they're all gonna come out after dark and they're gonna head right down to the water and head out on their way. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So you see all these little hatchlings here? So we get thousands of nests here in Florida, um, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands over the course of the year. Um, and so it's a really, really important place for these sea turtles to come. Pretty cool. Um, one of our last exhibits here in the education um, exhibit hall is talking again about sea turtles, but one of the ways that we are trying to help them, um, and this is something called a turtle excluder device, or a TED, okay? So a TED is actually, you know, one of the ways that we catch shrimp and other fish is we use great big nets that we pull behind a boat. So we've got this boat here, this is, gonna, this is called a trawler. It's gonna pull this great big net behind it. And a lot of times those fish and the shrimp and stuff will get caught in the net and that's how we get our dinner. Unfortunately, sometimes sea turtles can get in that net as well. But like we talked about the other day, sea turtles have to come up to the top to breathe, right? So if they get stuck in that net, they can maybe not do so well. So a turtle excluder device is something that is a big metal grate. So we see that kind of in the back of the net. And what happens, the turtle will come into the net, hit that grate and get kicked out a little trap door that all the fish can't find, but it lets that turtle get out of the net and swim up to safety, all right? So that's been really good to help protect our sea turtles and, and really save a lot of them from getting stuck in these nets, all right? Well, fantastic. So we've got a lot of great information in here, but now we're actually going to head back out the door and we're going to go out and we're going to go into the main house so you can see our classroom and some of our other exhibits. Sound good? Yes. All right, let's go. How do the trails go out? Well, they're going to keep swimming and they're going to hit this big metal grate. So keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. Oh, and you get kicked right out of the net. Very good, just like a sea turtle. Nicely done. So this is the Carpenter House family's kitchen, and you can see they kept it just like it was. So this house was built in 1941, so it's been around here a little while, huh? Yeah. Um, but it's really cool to see um, everything the way it was, and they wanted to do this just to make sure they could keep um, just how beautiful this home was, um, even when the family was living here. Pretty cool. 
So now we're actually going to walk right through here, and this is our little turtle room. All right? Okay. All right, Addison. So this is our little turtle room. Okay? So we've got a couple of different kinds of turtles in here. Um, these are all ones that have come to us because somebody either couldn't take care of them or actually one we showed up and it was sitting on our front door when we got to work in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Um, is there a turtle in here like Captain? That's a great question. And actually there's none that are sea turtles in here, but we have some different kind of turtles. So that's why it's fun to see in here. So over here, this is Clem. This is our diamondback terrapin. So diamondback terrapins are cool because they live um, not in salt water and not in fresh water, but something we call brackish water. So it's where it's kind of salty, but not quite as salty as the ocean. And you can see they're beautiful with that white head and all the spots and all these beautiful markings on their back. So Clem came to us because somebody found them in the canal behind their house and Clem wasn't doing very well. So she brought it home, started to take care of it. And once she, Clem was doing better, she figured that she maybe didn't know how to take care of it very well. So they called the, the Marine Environmental Education Center at the Carpenter House here. And we were able to go pick it up and set up this great new display and talk about Diamondback Terrapins, which do live native here in South Florida. But they are very, very cool because they live in that brackish water. All right? So now if we move over here, this is another kind of turtle. This one also lives in Florida naturally. This is called a Florida box turtle. So this is Stella. Um, Stella, she's loving her log right now, just kind of hanging out. Um, but she's one that doesn't live in water. She does live on land. And so she, we give her a little bit of water so she can kind of soak and get a drink and things like that. But she lives most of her life, you know, on the ground and she actually will dig down into the into the ground to make her home and so that's why we have this little log here so that lets her kind of dig in there and feel a little bit like she's at home when she gets inside her log all right so florida boxer that's another one stella here that does live native in south florida and our last turtle here in this room it, you can kind of see him sticking his head up right there. This is a red-eared slider. So this is Cashew. Uh, Cashew is the one that showed up on our front porch. He came in here about this big, little, little, tiny guy. And we called him Cashew because he was in a mixed nut container sitting right on our front porch when we got to work. <laughs> All right, so it's kind of fun. But it's another great, um, you know, animal for us to have here at the center because while red ear sliders do live here, they're not native. So we talked about the lionfish outside. Those are invasive species because they come here. There's a lot of them, and they're actually hurting some of the animals that are supposed to live here. Um, cashew is a non-native kind of turtle. So they live here, but they're not really doing any damage. So they're, you know, they, they do all right, but they're not usually living in this area. They usually live a little bit further up um, in in the country up towards Georgia and places like that a little bit further north all right so he's a lot of fun and we do have some placostomus in here as well these are those big fish in the bottom so if you have any aquariums at home those are the algae eaters that we usually put in the aquariums kind of keep them clean well those we also have in a lot of our canals down here because people release them from their aquariums and they do very well and so like uh, cashew who is non-native turtle those are non-native fish that now live here in South Florida, even though they're not really supposed to. All right? Very cool. So now, let's head into the living room here, and we can talk about our classroom area. Um, what are these? Ooh, that's a good question. So this is a sea urchin. So just like you might see out in the ocean, this is a different kind of sea urchin. This one was, um, came from really, really deep in the ocean, um, but we were very fortunate to have one of our professors at NSU allow us to have these so we can show them off here to people that come into the center. So yeah, that's a sea urchin um, that you know, actually came from really, really deep water, so they're kind of cool. You can see its little mouth right there in the bottom. We actually have another, a sea urchin over here that uh, we have in the aquarium that you can see here in just a second as well. Cool. All right, let's go check out the classroom. All right, so this is where we actually bring school groups and people like that in to learn about our environment. So things like sea turtles, sharks, coral reefs, 
Um, right now, we're actually setting up a new exhibit. So when we do open up, everybody come on down because we've got some new exhibits that we've set up while we've been shut down. And this is going to be a lionfish tank. So just like we had that video outside, we're going to have some live ones in here. So right now, the tank is just getting ready so that we can put those fish in there. So it's pretty cool. Let's go take a look. All right. So there, this is a sea urchin, just like you saw in the jar over there. This is a long spine sea urchin that we have that lives right here in South Florida as well. So you can see that little orange and white dots on their head. And he's actually going around and just munching all the algae growing on that piece of coral, that old piece of coral right there. All right. So we got a couple little damsel fish in there as well. And that was just to help get the tank ready to go so that we can put lionfish in here hopefully very, very soon. Um, and we're actually working on all the signs and things. So when we do open up, come on down and come see our new exhibits at the center. Okay. So what do you think over here? These are some pretty cool things, right? Yes. So one of the things that we do is we want to teach people about the different kinds of sea turtles. Okay. So I'll pull this guy out. This is the shell of a green sea turtle. So this is just like Captain. Um, this one's a little bit bigger than Captain. This is almost bigger than you are. Um, but green tea sea turtles are the second largest of all the sea turtles still alive today. They can get up to about four to five hundred pounds. You can see they get pretty big. They actually get a little bit bigger than this even, but this is a pretty good size one. All right. So this is the shell of a green sea turtle. We can kind of look inside here. This is just like your backbone. That's the backbone of the sea turtle as well. And what are these right here on you? Your ribs, yeah. So these are the ribs of the sea turtle. They come along and they kind of form part of the shell. And this is that bony shell, that hard shell, like we were talking about. Um, so this is a hard shell turtle where a leatherback has that real soft shell um, and you wouldn't, wouldn't feel quite like this one. All right. Uh, these are just something we made to kind of look like coral to sit in the corner over here. So. But we do have some real coral, or the skeleton of a coral as well. Um, so just like we were talking out in the um, education center, or the education hall, uh, NSU grows corals. And so corals are kind of cool because they are a plant, but they're also an animal. So they go, grow and they look a lot like a stone. Um, and so we've got this stony, kind of hard coral part that's, um, you know, very, very hard. And then the color that you get on corals is actually a little animal that lives on this called zooxanthellae. Kind of a crazy, weird word, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so they'll grow, live on there. So this is just the sort of the stony under part of the, the coral. And the rest of it is that zooxanthellae, which would give it the color, like you see here, the oranges and blues and greens. That would be the zooxanthellae that live on this, this part right here. All right? But with, at NSU, we can take a little tiny piece, we can clip off this end right here, and this will grow a whole new coral just like this one. It'll keep getting bigger and bigger just by taking a little piece and sticking it on a rock. All right? Um, so we also have some skulls over here. So these are skulls of different kinds of sea turtles. Um, this one right here is a green sea turtle. Um, and so just like Captain, we probably won't look this close at Captain's mouth in a little bit here, um, but we can see how she's going to be able to eat out there. So green sea turtles love to eat greenery. So out in the wild, they eat lots of things like seagrass and algae. And so their beak, they've got these little, they call them serrations, so little rough spot here. They can use that to cut right through the, the leaves of the seagrass. Um, where something like a loggerhead turtle um, it's got a much bigger head and they crush things like oysters and clams. So their mouth looks a little bit different and I'll actually go right over here and grab one of those. <laughs> so both of these turtles, this is the green sea turtle's head, this is a loggerhead sea turtle's head. 
this these animals would be almost the same size this one might actually be a little bit bigger than this one so the whole rest of its body about the same size but this head is so much bigger and the reason for that they've got this nice big flat part here and really strong jaws and that's how they can actually crush an oyster shell or a clam to get to the meat inside where the green sea turtle has these little sharp edges they can slice through that that grass um, to have their vegetables for dinner. All right, very cool. Um, what are the jars? All right, so we've got some other specimens and different bits and pieces to show kind of what some of these um, things look like. So this right here is called the scoot of a sea turtle. So the scoots are all the little markings. This is a scoot on the shell. Um, and they actually will grow and expand and they shed them as they get bigger. Um, and so these are some that would have probably come off of a flipper as they got bigger, they would shed that. Um, and then in here, um, this is actually something that's kind of cool. So when we swallow, our food goes down our esophagus. This is the same thing for a loggerhead turtle or a trachea. Um, that's where the food and <clears throat> stuff's gonna go in. For the, um, the leatherback sea turtles, those really, really big ones, they eat jellyfish for dinner, okay? And jellyfish, so the ones they like are pretty big, and what they do, they can grab those jellyfish, they swallow them down, but they don't wanna swallow all the extra water as well. And so they have something called papillae, these big, um, look almost like teeth, but they're kind of soft, they go down, and so this jellyfish gets stuck in that, and they can push all the rest of the water out so they're not getting really full on just water, but they're actually eating the jellyfish that they want. So, and here, this is some of the little um, hatchlings. So this is actually one of those leatherbacks we were just talking about. So you can see it looks a little bit different. Um, these ridges down the back, um, those are sort of bony ridges, but it's softer in between compared to that green turtle and all the other ones that have that hard bony shell like we were talking about. All right. And what is this? This is that papillae that I was just talking about. So you can see all these little things look almost like teeth. That's what's gonna hold the food as they swallow it and they try to get rid of the water. That's gonna hold all their food in their neck so they can't spit it right back out and then they can get rid of the water and swallow just the food down. So that's the papillae that's inside that that we were just looking at. Pretty cool. So what do you think that is? Um, a shark jaw? Yeah, exactly. This is a shark jaw. This is actually a tiger shark jaw. We can tell that by the shape of these teeth. You can see they're kind of serrated. They've got that little edge on them. Um, and this is, you know, uh, tiger sharks can get pretty big. This is actually still a fairly small mouth for those guys. Um, but it's pretty cool to see kind of how they grow. And if we pick this up, what's really cool about sharks is they have rows and rows and rows of teeth. Because sharks always want to have nice sharp teeth ready to catch their dinner. So if they break one or a tooth falls out, just like we might lose our teeth, the next one will roll up and be ready to go in about one to two days. So they're always replacing. A lot of sharks will have seven or eight different rows of teeth and they make teeth their whole lives. Some sharks can have over 10,000 teeth in the, over their whole lifetime. Wow, right? Would you want to lose 10,000 teeth? No, sounds like a hassle, doesn't it? But sharks are pretty good at it. They can get them right back and ready to go. Perfect, let's go. We're gonna go outside now. Actually, we're going to go downstairs and we're going to see where we get Captain's breakfast ready. All right? All right, let's go. Follow me. This is our behind the scenes area. We don't really bring people in here very often, but this is where we actually get all the food ready uh, for Captain and our other animals, all the little turtles and stuff upstairs. So we've got our fridge right over here. Uh, like we said upstairs, Captain loves greens, right? She loves seagrass and algaes out in the wild. Well here, we don't really have a good stock of seagrass, so she gets lettuce, um, green peppers, cucumbers, 
So a nice big salad, all right? So this is what we're gonna have for her breakfast today. Um, and because we wanna make sure Captain's really healthy, do you take your vitamins every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well we get Captain's vitamins as well. So she'll get different pills, and this allows her to get all the nutrients and the different things that she needs out of her food that she would normally get out in the wild, but we can't really give her here just with our lettuce because it's not quite the same as seagrass. So we give her um, a green sea turtle multivitamin just like you get your multivitamin so that she's nice, nice and healthy and ready to go. Sounds good? All right, well let's go outside and let's go give Captain her breakfast because I know she's starving. All right, perfect. Um, we'll probably stop at the aquaponics on the way. So we've got some other animals outside. All right, let's go. All right, so now we're walking around the backyard again. Here you can see some different statues. So this uh, shark, this is actually trash again that we picked up on our beach cleanup just a couple of weeks ago. So this is all trash from right here. Um, and we work with, again, a number of different groups. Um, this was made by Man and Weiss and Free Our Seas and Beyond, another great, great group here in the Hollywood area. And we do a lot of work with them to kind of teach people about marine debris and the dangers of that out in our ocean. All right. So come on in and we'll go visit Captain. tried to release Captain uh, because they thought she was doing really well. They thought she'd be able to go back out in the wild, and, which is really what they want to do when they get animals into rehab. They want to get them back out in the wild again. Um, but unfortunately, about three weeks after that, she washed back up on a beach again. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to feed Captain her breakfast. She's trained to come to this little purple dot. So just like you might train your dog to come when you call, this is our call for Captain. We're going to stick this in the water. And she knows it is time for breakfast. Okay, um, can she use her back fins? She usually could, but because of her injuries, she actually doesn't use her back fins very well. She's kind of got some paralysis where she can't use them. Um, she can, you know, she moves them a little bit here and there, but not nearly as well as she used to. All right. So that's also why she doesn't really steer as well as she would like to as well. Uh, so we're going to give her uh, green leafy lettuce, romaine lettuce, green peppers, and cucumbers for her dinner. And she also gets a little bit of shrimp, which are her favorite, so we'll save those for dessert um, to give her a little bit of protein as well. But, so um, when you give a, an animal their medicine, they don't always like to take it. So what we do with Captain is we hide it in some of her favorite food, the lettuce. So we're going to put it in here, give her a nice little vitamin sandwich. We'll get that ready. And then she doesn't even know that she's getting the medicine that she needs. She just eats it right up. <laughs> there you can see she sliced right through that cucumber. That's just like she does with seagrass with that little beak of hers. Yeah, 
and that water coming out of her nose, just like we talked inside those papillae. So she doesn't want to swallow a big bunch of water every time she eats a bite of food. And so what she does, she gets that food in her throat and then she pushes that water back up through her nose. And that papillae holds all the lettuce and cucumber right in her throat so she can swallow it down when she's done. Very cool. That's a great observation to see that water coming out. So that's just another um, pill that she gets. So um, the big reason that Captain is here is because that boat injury, it cracked through her shell and she gets air kind of trapped under the shell and she floats at the surface. So this black thing is actually just a backpack that holds weights. So that allows her to sit in the water like she's supposed to. If she didn't have that water, that backpack on, the back of her shell would be up out of the water floating really high. We kind of call her a bubble butt. <laughs> with that one. Um, but with the backpack, she's really, really comfortable. But this just allows her to um, not build up so much of that gas inside and have quite so many issues with floating. So, yeah, she gets a couple of different medicines for different reasons. So most of them are different vitamins. She just, uh, oh, she wants to. She does love her breakfast. in a bunch of different ways. This with the tongue, so we know she's getting her medicine and things like that. Um, but sometimes we also will put it in feeders that we sink down to the bottom, because most of the time she would be eating seagrass off the bottom of the ocean. So we want her to go down to the bottom like normal as well. Um, and so sometimes we'll put them in feeders like that. Sometimes you'll put them in a big ball that she has to kind of work. So just like your your dog, you might put treats in a little palm toy or something like that. They have to roll around and get the treats out of. We do the same thing for Captain with some of her dinner as well. Stretch your back on those, roll balls around. And we've got a number of other toys that we actually sink down to the bottom. They have maybe brushes on them, stuff like that. We want to make sure she's nice and happy. Um, they are pretty, you know, sea turtles do kind of live on their own in the wild, so it's not like she's lonely. But we do like to make sure she's using her brain and moving around and staying, staying active. So that's why we give her these different toys um, and different ways to feed her and things like that. All right. All right. Do you want to help me put the rest of her feeder together for the rest of her breakfast? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now is we put together lots of different of these, these toys and feeders that she uses so that she can get down to the bottom and feed like she would out in the wild. So what we want to do is just kind of fill these holes with lettuce or the um, green peppers. So if you get a couple pieces together like this, you can kind of squeeze this together and you shove it right in the hole. And it makes it like a little... Um, like this? Yep, exactly. So put that right in in there. Yeah, it's like a little seagrass smorgasbord here for her. Okay. And kind of, we'll just kind of wedge all this stuff in there in different places. Nice big chunk there, huh? Some right up top. Yeah, she doesn't let much get by, that's for sure. So how big will she get? So green sea turtles are the biggest of all the hard shell turtles. 
Um, she can get up to a little over three feet long, just her shell, and might weigh up to four or 500 pounds. Wow. Right? So she'll get pretty big. Wow. So she's, she weighs about 65 pounds right now, so she's got a lot of growing to do. She's gonna get a lot bigger here with us. Yep, a little side one there. All right, so we'll give her this right here, and then the rest we're just gonna throw on top so she can get it right off the bottom, you know, right off the on the surface. So thank you very much for helping me put uh, Captain's food together. So now we're gonna feed her, we're gonna put this in the water, it's gonna go down to the bottom, and she's gonna have to dive down and feed a lot more like she would out in the wild, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry this over, and we'll slide it into the bottom, and she can go and feed right off the bottom, all right? Let's do it. Oh, she knows what's coming. She's ready to go. So just be nice and careful. We're gonna walk this way just a little bit. That's all right. All right, so we're just gonna slide this in the water right here. Now she's gonna have to dive. Oh, she just, she's your best friend now, right? She's like, oh, thank you for breakfast. It's all down there, silly. She's taking the easy stuff first. Uh huh. Are you having fun, Addison? Yeah. Let me see those giggles. You having a good time? Yeah. This is awesome, huh? See, so when they're down on the bottom like that, they feed and they, you can't see the water coming out, but she's still pushing that water out of her nose just like she was spitting yeah, water at us. Yeah, Exactly. So she still just wants to eat that seed, or that the lettuce that we're giving her. She can suck it right in along with a bunch of water and then get rid of the water. So what kind of water is this? Ooh, great question. So where do sea turtles normally live? The, the ocean. In the ocean, right? So salt water. So yeah, this is a salt water pool, which is really cool. Um, so it's just like out in the ocean for her. Um, and we actually have a place where we can pull the water from a well deep down in the ground. We have salt water there and we can fill the pool with that. So it makes it nice and easy. And then we can actually go in the back in just a second and we can see all the filtration. So just like your fish tank at home, we wanna make sure the water is clean and healthy for Captain. So we've got a lot of really fancy equipment in the back to make sure the water stays nice and clean um, so she's healthy in the water here. Now, why don't we go take a look at how we keep this pool clean for Captain with all the filtration. Okay. All right. Sunlight might um, kill some bacteria, UV light, 
That's a UV sterilizer, so it can kill bacteria in the water as the water goes through there. Um, this guy up here is called a fractionator. It breaks down stuff that's floating at the surface. Those two things over there are, are heater and chiller, so the water is always about 75 degrees all year round, is what she loves. So we keep the water nice and comfortable for her. Um, and then this big blue thing here is called a biofilter. Um, so there's little balls that have lots of surface area on them. So there's lots, lots of bacteria in there that help break down some of the toxins and things that are in the water from, you know, maybe when she, um, you know, missed a little bit of food, it starts to break down, that bacteria is going to break all that down so the water stays nice and clean. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that. So you've done stuff with kids on before, but how is this adventure? Really this is, fun. This is really amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Um, how do you get that off the Oh, well, we've got a little hook right here that we'll grab it out, but I'm going to leave it in there because she likes to scratch her belly on it as well. So she uses the toy as well as something to get her food out of. So I'll leave it in there for a little while today. She wiped that out, huh? I just realized that. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> didn't take long. Yeah, she doesn't mess around when it comes to her breakfast. Uh -uh. But there is a little bit still in there. Just a little bit? She'll come back and get that. Oh, yeah. All right. Should we go look at aquaponics? Yeah. All right. Push that little button right there. All right. All right, so Addison, now we're gonna take a look at one of the ways we actually grow some of Captain's food. So this is called an aquaponic system. 
All right, so you can see we're growing lettuce up in the top here. These are lights that help the lettuce grow. Um, and this is actually just sitting in water. So there's a little foam thing sitting on water up here. And then so there's a tank of water here and a tank of water down here. If we look in here, we've actually got goldfish and tilapia fish that live in the bottom. So we feed the fish down here. And when they poop and make a mess, that is what is actually making all the stuff grow up here. The nutrients from the fish are making the lettuce grow up top. So it's a nice little system where everything's connected and it can really show how this all works, right? So this is a great way. You can actually get these to put in your house or in your backyard or your garage. Uh, this is a company that we um, called Aqua Grove that made this. And you can actually have it right at your home to grow some of your own vegetables, lettuce, whatever you want. So very, very cool system. This one has solar panels as well, so it can do most of that all on its own power with the sun. Very, very cool. All right, Addison. So this you can see uh, one of the Free Our Seas and Beyond, Man and Weiss's sculptures. So this is a shark um, that we've actually taken debris from the oceans and turned into a beautiful piece of art. And this is just to help people understand um, you know, what's out there, all of the trash in here, everything that's on this sculpture all came out off of Hollywood Beach right here behind the Carpenter House. So um, it's really important to do your own part, you know, pick up a piece of trash anytime you see it. Um, if you're out there, do those beach cleanups, but you don't have to go to a beach cleanup, you can pick that up anytime you want. Um, do sharks eat trash? Pretty much everything in the ocean eats a little bit of trash. Not on purpose, but just because they don't know what it is. And especially things like plastic bags. They might look like a jellyfish to those turtles or whatever that wants to eat it. But any trash that's out there, something might eat, yeah. Tiger sharks, we saw that jaw upstairs. Tiger sharks we actually call the garbage cans of the sea because they like to eat everything. And they've had ones where they found tires in their stomach, wire in their stomach, all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> All right, so we've kind of looked at Captain and we're gonna go look at a couple more spots here. But here we're just standing in this beautiful backyard. We do have lots of great um, events here. Sometimes people actually even rent it out for weddings and have their, their reception right here in the backyard. Wow. Pretty beautiful spot for a wedding, isn't it? Yes. Absolutely. So what we're gonna do now is we wanna walk right out. You can see we're right on the beach, which is a great thing for us because we can teach people about the beach and about the ocean with it right out our back door. So, what kind of animals do you find on the shores? Great question. So we get lots of animals that are supposed to be there. There's lots of amazing shorebirds that live on the beaches. Um, we also have this dune system, which is one of the things that's really important for our coastline because it helps protect not only us, but also the beach. You know, if it's just sand, it's easy to wash away. Where we have all these plants and trees and things, really sort of makes this a much uh, more stable place and it does protect us when we have big storms like a hurricane um, this will actually protect us um, if the waves get really high but if we come out here you can see we are right here on beautiful Hollywood Beach Right here, off the beach, there is amazing life. There's great snorkeling here. Uh, we sometimes will see dolphins swimming by right along the beach here. Obviously, sea turtles come in here. Um, most of them have hatched from this season, but we had a lot of sea turtle nests that were right here, right outside of the carpenter house as well. So uh, it's a beautiful place and a lot of great life that lives right here in our backyard. That was awesome. Good. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was great to have you here at the Marine Environmental Education Center today. Um, you know, if you ever want to come back, bring your classroom with you. We have a lot of great programs, everything about sea turtles, sharks, marine mammals, marine debris. We'll even do lionfish and, um, you know, like squid dissection sometimes. So if you guys are interested, you should come on back and learn a little bit more about this amazing place and this amazing environment that we've got here. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. It was great to have you. Talk to you soon, Madison. Bye. I'm Derek. And I'm Madison. And we'll see you next, next time, time on, on Kids Zone. Zone.